Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of the Stogie Geek Show. I'm, of course, your host, Paul Asadorian, coming to you here from Rhode Island, where we fired up some fine cigars and can't wait to tell you all about them. I'm here with my illustrious host, Mr. Tim Muggerini. Welcome, Tim. How's everybody doing? And, of course, Mark Jr. is here in the studio. Welcome, Mark. Well, hello. Daddy. Yes, new and brand new. Congratulations to Mark I Jr. I joined that club. <laughs> Congrats, man. It's awesome. He is now it a daddy. Is. Cheers to that. Cheers. Salute. Congratulations. Baby girl. And how many Bell. pounds? Name and, and if, whatever you want. I don't know how Annabelle much. Annabelle Cassidy Maloney. Born 6 pounds, 5.4 ounces. Awesome. 19.25 inches. Awesome. That'll be done. burned into the brain forever at twelve twenty eight, June third. Uh, give it a few months and no sleep. We'll see about that. <laughs> yeah, those, those tend to slip away from you. <laughs> that first year or so kind of slips away. Yes, we've got a fantastic show for you here on the Stogie Geeks. Very excited tonight about the cigars of the week. We decided to first light up the poor Laranaga Panatellas. I called it the Petite Robust, uh, the Petite uh, Corona. What did I say? Hopefully in the beginning I said Petite Corona. You did. Okay. It is a Petite Corona size, I would say. Yeah, but they call uh, these the Panatellas. It is not the Portland Raga Petite Corona, though. No, it is not. not. No, it is not. It's a 5 by 38. Oh, very nice. Oh, I, you know. The Petite Corona is a little big, like a little wider. A little bit wider and shorter? Or no? Um, It's interesting. It's an interesting. I size. would think it would be it would be shorter, but a larger ring gauge. It's a slight. slight I don't think. I don't think it is shorter. Actually, to think about, it's got I that. It's, yeah, you know, it's got that slight um, Cuban ish box press, which is like we made the box a little bit too too small, too small <laughs> for it, and it just kind of squishes them down. Yep. Um, so obviously these are Cuban. These are Cuban Puros. Uh, yes. These were donated to us by Alex, a.k.a. M.W. LaBelle on BLTO.org. Thank you, Alex. I know he's listening right Thanks, now. Thanks, Alex. Thank you very much, Alex. You're awesome. Uh, he said that they have a box dated in November 2011, so they are a bit young as far as Habanos go. I, I don't get much youngness from them. Uh, it's smoking great. Mm. Um, smoking great so far. Yeah. Uh, I'm a little ways into it now. Smoking wonderful. Oh, yeah, you're, um, you're going we, should, we should send some people that send us uh, cigars. We should send them stickers at least. Oh, he's been taken care of. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank uh, you for that. I've been taken Tim care. is the official sender of Alex, stuff. Alex, you have a care package on the way, yes. including some stickers. So Sender of stuff. So, um, What else about this stick, Tim? Yeah. It, smelled, it made me sneeze when I sniffed the wrapper. That was yeah, weird. That was a strange <laughs> thing, man. Twice now I sniffed the wrapper today, and both times it made me sneeze. I thought it was just me. Mark Jr. sniffed the wrapper a few <laughs> yeah. minutes ago. Same thing. Paul, same thing. You I were, didn't actually sneeze, but I got the urge like I wanted to sneeze, yeah. but I couldn't, and I yeah. hate that. It was right? almost like yeah. some pepper yeah. on the, the pre light yeah. aroma, if, if you will. Um, although I'm not getting any pepper whatsoever. No, it's, it's very oh, smooth, flavor. very nice. Yeah. Very different from the, uh, the other size, the Monte Carlo size. There's none of that citrus, really. I nope. don't get. I get uh, earthiness, nice, smooth. This is smooth. more like the Petit Corona flavor profile than the Monte Carlo is. Mm. Now I am getting a little citrus off of there, but less so than the larger size. But um, yeah, the Monte Carlo is like citrus blast. Yeah, yeah. Um, fantastic Excellent. though. It's a decent draw, good burn. Um, we'll see where it goes. And uh, Tim, what are we drinking this evening? You uh, you brought this into the studio. Yeah. So. Um, this was actually recommended to me uh, by Jose Blanco of Hoya J Nic Nicaragua uh, quite some time ago on Twitter. It is the national drink of Nicaragua. Really? It is the Ron Flor de Connor rum, in this case, the 18 year old Centario Gold. Uh, picked it up at our local shop, reasonably priced. I think I paid $41 for the bottle. Nice. It's very good. It is very good. Muchos gracias, Senor Jose Blanco. <laughs> yes. It's very nice. It's good stuff. Going very well with the uh, poor La Ranyaga Panatella. So, was there, was there anything else? So, at the end of the show, we will announce who the winners are of our Jade Grotto Reserve, a Corona Gorda Fiber, and the Paul and Stokie Santa's Most Versatile Cigars. We have yes. chosen winners. The winners of each of those contests will receive the respective five-pack from uh, the folks, fine folks here at Stogie Geeks. So, we'll get right into it and talk about the cigars that we've been smoking. <laughs> 
Well, it's been two weeks, so we got quite a list. We have quite the list. I will I will not start with my number one. I want to save that, okay. actually. I'll start with my number two. How does that sound? Is your number one and number one for the week? But then my number one is the number one of the week. Interesting. I, I, I don't know how it didn't end up. It ended up as number one by accident, but it is definitely my pick of the week. Maybe we'll save my number one for last. I got to kind of get a feel. I forgot to pick one for the week. So I'm, while you, you, you can feel while it you, out. While you yeah. talk, I'm going to go look through my La list. Aurora <laughs> Escogidos. An excellent medium body smoke, caramel style flavor is now overly complex, great with coffee, comes in in a whopping $3 a stick, sports a Cameroon uh, Cameroon wrapper, Dominican Republic filler, and Dominican Republic uh, binder. Uh, The review uh, is in the uh, show notes from the Stogie Review. They did a review of this stick. It used to be a cigar they only gave out at the La Aurora factory for people who are visiting there, recently became available uh, on the mass market, where I picked it up on auction, again, for the whopping price of $3 a stick. Now, Tim, I gifted you one in your gift pack that I, uh, I gave everyone from Stogie Geeks uh, two gift packs, actually, this evening. And in one of your gift packs, there was a uh, La Aurora Escogidos. Okay. I thought it was great. I, I mean... I mean, it's not like a ten or fifteen dollar kind of. I mean, to really factor pricing into the equation, my expectations were low yeah. <laughs> going into this. Well, that's a given. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's why I was kind of wowed by it. Um, I, I don't. Uh, you know, I, I think this is this is box worthy. Um, is the experience that I got from it anyway? And, and maybe I'm, that's like factored price in the equation. I think if I were to take price out of the equation, it might only be a fiver. Mm-hmm. But in the fact, if you could get a box at three dollars a stick. Um, it's hot. It's to find a, a good box. Stick, a three yeah. Bucks a stick. Yeah. Right? So, so just impressive. keep in mind that box where the rating is taking the three dollar price tag uh, into account. Now, I was only able to buy three of them. Interesting. They were three dollars. They were singles. Okay. Um, I wasn't able to actually buy a box or even a five pack. So, um, curious to see. Wh- I haven't looked around to see where else these are being sold. Um, but I picked these up on Cigar Auctioneer. So, excellent. Now, uh, just a little tip to all the users out there who use Cigar Auctioneer. They came mm. out with an iPhone app this mm. week. I haven't had a chance to play with it. I did install it, but uh, check it I out. I did. Yeah. So if you're watching items, so if you go back to our episode where we talk about auctions, if yes. you're watching items on an auction. I had a feeling you'd have input on this. Yeah. If, you, if you're watching, if they're on your watch list, you will get an alert on your iPhone. It'll make the text message sound. And you'll think, you, like I did, that you're getting all these text messages. But it's really that just items on your watch list are coming to close on auction. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. So if you want, yeah. if you, you know, like, wow, I really want that. I want to maybe see where it's kind of panning out at the end. Um, you can say, hey, throw me an alert. You're going to learn your phone. And then you can go right in the app and bid on it. And you can only, it's limited. You can't, you can only look at stuff and bid on stuff on your watch list through the app. Okay. But then there's also the thing where it says browse to the website where you can look at the website through the app. Okay. So. Sounds awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I it's installed. Yeah. I just haven't had a chance to log in and take a peek yet. But yeah, I'm going so I went and updated my watch list with a you know a bunch of uh, Padron, Tatuaje, and Opus X. So basically, anything coming out from those manufacturers so is on my watch list. So when your wife asks why you're getting so many texts, you just yes. tell her it's the other woman. That's right. That's You'll right. Be in less, trouble, less trouble than bidding on cigar. My phones. girlfriend's name is Cigar Auctioneer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And she always has Padron, Tatawahe, uh, and Opus, Opus X. Opus, yeah. So that's like a great quality in a girlfriend, yes, I guess, absolutely. if you're into that kind of thing. She's a keeper. <laughs> she is a keeper. All righty, Tim, what do you got on now? Oh, I'm curious. The number one on your list, I'm very curious to hear your thoughts yeah, on. Yeah, Because I gifted these to you because I won them on auction yes. for like ridic- probably $3 a stick. Probably. And they're gigantic sticks. So yes. I'm, I'm, yeah. It's the Gurker. Mm-hmm. The Beauty and the Beast. Now, that's two separate cigars. Mm-hmm. Same size, six and a half by 58 ring gauge. How did you get both those in your mouth at the same time? Was it a, oh, oh, oh. Well, I switched hands. Oh, okay. I'm double fisted. Yeah, yeah so I, I see. Did you smoke them at the same time? I smoked them back to back, actually. Okay, night. back to back. Yeah. In all fairness, um, the Beast didn't go well, so I, never, I I saw that. Yeah. You had to pitch it. It wasn't good at all? Uh, let's start with the Beauty. We'll start with the positive. Mm. Okay. So fair enough. Uh, the beauty is uh, the lighter wrapper. It is the lighter wrapper. I believe it was an Ecuadorian shade grown wrapper. Um, Dominican binder, Nicaraguan filler. Burn and draw, great. Um, mild to medium strength. Typical Ecuadorian Connecticut sweetness, what we've talked about before. Um, good solid smoke. It got a bit bitter and harsh on the last third. I had to chuck it on the last third. It just went downhill. But I was a good hour and 15 minutes into it before I even hit that point. Mm. Um, I say the angler. 
Um, I then followed it up with the Dark Rapper, The Beast, uh, which has a aged Costa Rica rapper, Nicaraguan binder, and Honduran, sorry, Honduran, Dominican, and Colombian fillers. Um, right off the bat, I wasn't impressed. Bitter, harsh, unbalanced. Um, Sometimes... When you first light it up, though, any cigar absolutely can present absolutely. that bitter, harsh, unbalanced yeah. kind of thing, and then I got to the end up. of the first third. I gave it to the end of the first third. Yeah, no, it should have opened up. And at that it, point, yeah. I chucked it. And it was the same bitter, unbalanced. Oh yeah, all the way, through. all the way it through. Didn't change up. Uh, um, that's too bad. Chucked it. Um, La mulch. Sorry, yeah. I'm gonna give. It so a it does. Mulch. It is a lot. So you give it the lo- the Gurkha Beast is the se- like one of the only two or three maybe cigars that we've given lawn mulch to yeah, premium a premium hand rolled cigar anyway. Yeah. I think the beauty is a good solid smoke for what you mm-hmm. paid for it. I'd smoke it around you know yeah. grilling, working around the yard. I enjoyed it, but yeah, the Beast just n- did not impress me at all. So that's good. To, that's good to know. There you go, Stogie Sander. I gave somebody else lawn mulch. So. That's right. Yeah, Stogie Sander was saying we need to rate more cigars <laughs> lawn mulch. So there we go. We got one. Uh, Bolivar uh, Petit Corona. Solid Cuban smoke. Very smooth. Earthy flavors with some wood. Definitely box worthy. These were a little bit a uh, little bit of age on them. But I like the Bolivar uh, lineup thus far. I believe almost everything I've smoked from Bolivar I've really liked. I agree. Awesome, awesome Cuban yeah. mark. It's, it's the, just, the Bellicoso Fino. And I have the, not had a bad bowl of yet. Yeah. yeah. Now, I did have one that was really I've had aged. loved ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had, and I had one that was aged out. But I tell you, you know, the regular ones that we've been smoking, um, it was definitely, it's, it's awesome. And like I said, this one had a little bit of age on it. The 2011s so. are smoking good right now, man. The ones I've had have been barely, really Yeah, good. and I, I love my Bellicoso Finos, so... I it's great. Smoke. I mean, I could I could smoke one of those all the time and just come on the show and talk about it all the time because they're just that good, you know. So, Mark Junior, did you uh, smoke anything uh, in honor of uh, yeah, your wait daughter's second. birth? Yeah, you you were going to smoke something completely epic. Yes, you were. Come on, did you chicken I, out? I, I, no, I out? didn't chicken out. Um, but it was what? What was it? First, it was before you give it, before all right, okay, all right. So, well, the story said, behind it's cool. Tell it's the story. a it's a Davidoff Cuban. Lancero, but uh, in June of 1983 by my father-in-law, uh, seemingly to uh, c- commemorate the d- birth of his daughter. Um, he never said those words, but, uh, you know, presuming the, the month and year of... You can't really mistake yeah. that for much. You yeah, know? considering what it is. Now, did yeah. he ever talk to you about the cigar? He told me about it, but he didn't never really mention that about it. Okay. But at one would presume... Mm. Bought it just before she was born. Yeah. Um, so it's a 29 year old cigar. Um, unfortunately, it had uh, seen better days. Really? Yeah. In what respect? Did it burn okay? Or? Oh, it burned fine. Okay. It was just Davidoff's to have that light flavor profile. Yes, they do. And um, this was the first Cuban one I've ever had. So I can't really speak to the Cuban mm. mark. Um, not but, many people have, unless you were of smoking age at that time, probably. So. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So, um, but it, it, like most other light profiled cigars, they aren't meant to age for 28 uh, years. Yeah. So it was aged out. Yeah, mm. it was. So Did I smoked you, half of it. Okay. And then, you know, kind of moved on. Mm. It was... Unfortunate, but still kind of. No, was it was it bad? One hundred años, Lancero. Yeah, was it bad flavors or was it just aged out? It was very, very bland. Okay. Very, very bland. Um, would you say paper? Uh, yeah, yeah, almost. Yeah, I would say that actually. I've had had that happen. I haven't really. I didn't really think about it too much because it was not very interesting to me. Um, but uh, it was. Uh, you know. You know what, dude? At least you can say you smoked one. That's right. Yeah, yeah, not many of us can say we smoked one. I don't think you need to say it. Was it was 83, did you say? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I was like six. That was <laughs> the year I was born as yeah. well. Yeah. So, so it's, we weren't yeah. of smoking age, as Tim was alluding to. So. Damn, you're both making me feel old. Shit. I was more than six. <laughs> so, uh, Tim, as you uh, get a little closer to your microphone, what uh, uh, sure. do you else do you have on your list? My yeah, friend? so I had some epic smokes on my list. You do week. have some uh, epic smokes on there. It's, it's going to be tough to pick one, but um, one such epic smoke, the Padron Millennium. Um, gift from Mr. Paul Joyle. Thank you, sir. Um, what a gift. 12-year-old Padron. 
Um, I wrote, had the most incredible pre-light draw in recent memory. I mean, I couldn't place the flavors, but wow. I, I mean, just drawing before even lighting got me excited for the smoke. Uh, took the flame easily. It did start to burn a bit fast in the beginning, but it did slow down. Um, I found the draw would be really loose. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm not sure if maybe I compensated for it mm-hmm. without thinking about it. Um, but I had no problems with the burning drawer after that. Um, really great flavors. Hard for me to pick out exactly what I was picking up because there was so much going on with the smoke. Mm. And it was so balanced. Um, I liked the last third the best. I thought that was really mm. the best part of the smoke. I say the Oasis, man. Um, I know people have been telling us these are starting to go downhill. I didn't get that. I have nothing to compare it to. It's the first one I've ever had. And I'm glad people started but, saying that because that's kind of what prompted us to, uh, to get the gifts. Right. <laughs> there were only a few left and they were handed out. And, um, yeah, yeah, epic, man. Epic smoke. I know you talked about it last week, Paul. Um, have you had one? I have. Okay. I have. It's. it's oh, you talked about it last week. You, you, you had. Yeah, you had yeah. a few kicking around in your humidor. Two. Mm-hmm. I still have one, um, and I'll I'll get to it soon. It I don't know. I wouldn't. Really I wouldn't. Ru- I, I, what did you think? I didn't think it was aged out in any way, shape, or fashion. No, but like, again, I have nothing to compare it yeah, to. Yeah, I yeah. mean, who knows what it was like five years ago? Right. Yeah, you know I mean, what I mean? Because I mean, there is a lot of nuances. In that flavor profile that I question if maybe they were more to the forefront. Very unique flavors. Yeah. yeah. I mean. It was not like your normal. No. 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 I, I, I did notice some underlying floral notes, which mm-hmm. I thought was unique for a Padron. Um, yeah. I got like a floral or a citrus or a. Yeah. There's some kind of. All I know is distinct. I loved every second of it. Yeah. Nubbed it down to a half yeah. inch. Like I, I was mean, trying to pick the was, flavors out, and then I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna re- enjoy it because they're just they're awesome. I, I don't know what the, they are, but they're awesome. I did the <laughs> yeah. exact same thing, dude. I was like, you know, yeah. why am I torturing myself? I'm just gonna sit back right. and, and and burn this thing. And uh, something to be said for that. If you come across one, get it, smoke it. Uh, Good luck, though. Well, yeah. But you, never, <laughs> you never know, man. You never know. Where to Good luck with those there. efforts. Yeah. <laughs> you asked me three weeks ago if I was ever gonna come across one, I would have said no, and there, right, one right. landed in my lap. I mean, you know, so. Onward and upward. Um, I, I think I, next up on my list is a Scorpio. I'm trying to get the size and remember remember what this is for size-wise. This came out of my uh, Fuente Opus X Cigar Family Charity Foundation box from 2009. Uh, here it is here. It's a five and three quarters by 56. This is the uh, Opus X Scorpio from 2009, the natural wrapper. Is that a perfecto or? No, it's just a regular five and three quarters by 56. Okay. Um, straight cigar. Parejo. Parejo. And uh, Parejo, yeah. And uh, it, was, it was awesome. It is, this is a solid, solid offering from Opus X. Had that nice balance of strength, leather, and spice. Smoked it from start to finish. It burned great. Um, just awesome, awesome cigar. So finally one from the CFCF box that isn't like... There's ones that are like out of this world, and then there's ones that like underwhelming, like kind, of, kind of suck and are underwhelming. Yeah, this one was like one of those good solid smokes. So if you've got a Scorpio, I would say give it a whirl. Um, I think that the Opus blend in the larger ring gauge, gauge sizes does really really well. Yeah, I think it does really well in the small ones though too. Absolutely, the Petit yeah. uh, Petit Lancero, for yeah. instance, is a phenomenal smoke. But yeah, I, I think agree. they're all below. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to look away from that. I'm, just, I, I'm looking at you. No one's in the market. Just looking at each other like, you know what? He's grinding his teeth right now. I'm pretty sure I'm he's gonna, trying not I'm to gonna punch write, me in the head right now. <laughs> I'm going to write a program that every time we talk about Opus, we, we just, just yeah. turn away. <laughs> okay, now let's talk about Opus. <laughs> Tim's mute, uh, mic is muted, so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so the Scorpio was awesome. Fantastic. That's do you have news. any of those in your collection? I do not, no. I, I You know. I'm always keeping my eyes. It makes open you want to buy the 2010 or 11 box. Well, I mean, the BBMF Maduro makes me want to buy that yeah, box. That, but those you know, that special. would. After hearing you, I would hold on to it. You know, yeah. after the experiences we've had with the shark, I would pitch it. Yeah. You know, um, to, uh, I don't know. I, I wouldn't be... pitch it, but I'd find somebody who's never had one and trade it. You know what I mean? Is what I would do. Yeah. The LFMF yeah. was um, underwhelmed. I, oh, so that's on my list too. While we're on the Opus thing. Um, 
The LFMF. Why did you give him an opus then? I don't, that's what I'm I don't trying understand. to change his mind, Mark. It's I'm not trying to bring happen. him around. The he's, only way to do he's this in uh, he's in denial. The only Mark. way to do this is to take the band off and give it to him. You could do that, but I'm still going to recognize what it is, man. I don't think you will. I've I've smoked enough of them to know. A really really old one? No. Okay. How yeah. old is the one you gave me? Um, maybe a year or two. Yeah, those don't need a lot of age. What about I have, ones I have like to say the one he gave me, the Love Affair, is the one that I enjoyed the most out of all the ones I've tried. And I've only tried maybe three or four sizes. I mean, it hasn't been a lot. Um, you you got to give him at least a year to rest in your humidor before you. Even well, think I'll about tell you smoking. what, I'm going to put this thing down. And well, you said it's got a year on it now, right? Yeah, that's what it's ready to smoke. Okay, absolutely, right. it's ready to smoke. I digress. Go so. on. Uh, LFMF, one word, flat. I was just, I was so excited about this one too. And uh, Mark, you and I did a, a trade for one of these, and we both had the same. It was just, was it flat for you or just. Yeah, it, there just wasn't much to it. Yeah, yeah it was. Um, Which is interesting because it's such a sharp contrast from the Scorpio. I and mean, the Scorpio was full of flavor. And, and it's really not that much of a different size either. No, too, it's, it's, a similar, it's, it's a shorter, size, it's so. a short, it's like a 5 by 56. And Would you guys say that there's inconsistency in the blend? No. No, Mark and I smoked no. one out of the same box. Two different out of, sticks. Out yeah. of the charity boxes, the coffin cigars, there's an there's a inconsistency. All of the regular release sizes to me are are really good. Yeah. Um all of them. Obviously, I like some better than others, but that's probably more a function of me liking different sizes than other sizes. Um, like for instance, a double Corona is not really my favorite Vitola, you know. So, right. <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, the regular releases I, I like a lot um, across the board. I don't know if there's one that I wouldn't buy, right. but there have been a few coffin cigars that I that I wouldn't buy that I wouldn't buy again. Certainly, mm. yeah. So, um, that being said. That being said, I, I I'll still, tell you what, I you still guys bought, are going through the entire line, so you're pretty much you're going to determine what you want and what you don't want. Well, and I, I bought a 2010 CFCF box. I was so going to bring that up. I was going to bring I, that up. When I, when I make it through the 2000, so now I'm just, you know, hardcore smoking my box from 2009, knowing that I've got a 2010. Yeah. And when the 2011s become available after I've made it through my 2010, I'll find a 2011. I don't know. It's just... And I, I enjoy smoking. I don't know. I enjoy smoking them, even though some of them may be different or flat or, or whatever. I like smoking them, and if there's ones I ever want to trade, I've got something to, to trade well, or sell. It's, you know? a, it's a really unique thing, too, in the cigar industry. I mean, how, how many other brands can you think of that are coming out with strange, weird, experimental Vitolas right. all the time? You know what I mean? And that's unique. And it, for those of us that like Opuses, mm -hmm. that <laughs> That's kind of a fun thing for me. It's and, a fun and thing. I've to never been disappointed by yeah. smoking one of them. Yes, the flavors may have disappointed me, right. but the experience has never disappointed. Exactly. Me. Exactly. And I, that like, box I look, is I look for forward. a good cause too. Exactly. Correct. It's for charity. Yeah. It's for charity. I, it's for charity. I, I believe they donated to build schools in the in Dominican, Dominican Republic. Yeah, absolutely. So, I forget the name of the cause, but yeah. you are correct. But it's it, a it cigar is family charitable foundation. foundation. Yeah. Yeah. CFCF. It, it is fun to experiment with some of the different sizes, and, and I mean, some of them may be hit or miss. I, it's still fun. It's still. I I think it's fun to go get one of those coffins. It's in the individual coffin. It's a different kind of size. And it's just fun to smoke that blend in all those different uh, ages, in all those different sizes, in different wrappers, and shapes. And uh, it's it's fun. I like it. I find myself now at least once once a week going back and pulling something you, out man. of that box. Good for you. From I go once a week for an Opus, but yeah, I don't have as many of the coffin ones as you do. But, you know, I'm always willing to trade you and... Try Absolutely, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Anyway, so Tim, over to you. Uh, more epic smokes. The Viaje Skull and Bones Daisy Cutter, the original release. Mark Jr., have you smoked the one I gave you yet? I have not. Okay. I'm um, I'm definitely like saving that for like a I can have an un un uninterrupted. I experience. hear you, man. You yeah. know. Maybe when the wife goes out. I was gonna say, maybe when the baby's sleeping. <laughs> my, <laughs> I've already got a plan to be perfectly honest yeah. with you. My wife's aunt's coming out from Bozeman, Montana, and she's going to be bringing her, my daughter, to go meet her, aunt, you know, her great aunt for that matter. Um, and I'll be working at the time, so I won't be able to make that trip. Uh -huh. Daisy cutter time. <laughs> <laughs> Get home from work. Daisy cutter. Yeah. <laughs> so original release, two years old, almost to the day at this point. Um, 
Four by fifty-four Petit Robusto, much like most of the uh, Skull and Bones releases. Um, I got the perfect balance of leather, pepper, and oak. Um, second half, the pepper dissipated a bit, but the leather and oak continued with a lot of sweetness that crept in. This is what I wrote. The one thing I can say about this release, the original compared to some of the new releases, is balance. There was a lot more balance. It still had some power. No, um, you didn't get any cocoa, coffee. I was surprised. I did not, man. I have on some other Daisy, I'm sorry, some other Skull and Bones, like the 2011 yeah. February releases, but not on this one. I've only I smoked got he- one. I got heavy coffee, cocoa. I did not, yeah. The nice, sweet. I have I have two left, so I'll tell you what, I'm going to take another one down sometime over the course of the summer. I'm not going to let them sit. I'm, I mean, they need to be smoked, I think, at this point. Yeah. They're ready to be smoked. Um, yeah, I think you smoke. Two years old at this point. Yeah, you know, it's time. I to really get, think time to get to it. I, I've kind of um, changed my my outlook on aging. Um, I used to think you have to age stuff like ridiculous long periods of time. Now I'm like, if it's smoking good in a year or two, just smoke exactly. It. Well, like some some cigars sit well, yeah. and some cigars don't, and it's a balancing act. And you know, I would hate for something to get aged out before I smoked it. So, you know. If like I have the opuses, some, they just keep getting better. Yeah, you know, like that '98 one we yeah. smoked got aged out. But how do we get back on opus? We're talking well, about aging. <laughs> I, what I do personally is, if I'm aging something, I will take a stick out every six to eight months, yes. and I will smoke it and see mm-hmm. how it's going. That's if sort it is, of what I was alluding to. Yeah, yeah if it exactly. is smoking good. I will start taking them down because yeah. if you're enjoying them, I mean, what's the wait? I mean, why wait? I mean, because I have seen stuff age out. Mm-hmm. It's not uncommon. So, uh, let's go sixty ring. You guys ready to go sixty ring gauge? We love sure. the sixty let's ring. Do it. Right? I, I like know. it big, <laughs> big and fat. Yeah. EP Carrillo New Wave Short Run, the Galosios, something like that. It's a the big sixty ring, uh, New Wave Short Run. I, I'm just not a big fan of this sixty ring. The Robusto in this size, which I also smoked was just way better. I mean, the flavors were much more concentrated. I mean, it was your classic comparison of a 60 ring to a smaller Robusto sized cigar. The flavors were much more concentrated. When you get in the 60 ring, it's almost like when you're drinking scotch and you pour a little scotch in your glass and you drink it and you get a lot of the flavors and then you put like two or three handfuls of ice in it and then drink the same scotch and it gets diluted. That's kind of the experience with the flavors with this particular 60 ring. Now, there are some 60 rings which they do, and I was surprised that Carrillo actually um, blended this 60 ring in that way because a lot of people say that his 60 rings are really good because yeah, he adjusts the blend. This one, for whatever reason, didn't wow me. It wasn't bad. But it wasn't great. But it wasn't as good as the smaller sizes. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it did hold my attention for the whole cigar, which some, some well, a lot of 60 rings don't, so... Um, you know, props to his blending, but it still just didn't live up to my expectations compared to the other sizes um, that he's offering. So this is a, a Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper, a Dominican and Nicaraguan filler with a Connecticut broadleaf binder. Mm. And in the smaller sizes, like the Robusto was awesome. Yeah, I like it. The Robusto is box worthy. The 60 ring, I would say try one and see if you like it. And maybe that's your style. I mean, with the 60 ring, you can really puff away on it. It doesn't get harsh. You know, burns for long periods of time. Lots produces of smoke. lots of smoke. Yeah. So it was just light on the flavor. Speaking of sticks, we're about at the halfway point. Uh, a little more on yours, Paul. How's your Panatella doing? Fantastic. Yeah, I, I would say good. great representation of the Cuban blend. I'm getting those classic uh, little bit of earth, yep. lots of wood. Flavors. Lots of twang for me. Yeah, that Cuban twang. Yep. It's very distinct. You can pick that out. If you smoked enough Cubans, you reach a point where you can pretty much consistently pick it out. Mm Mm-hmm. Unless someone gives you an Edmundo from 2008 or whatever that one was we smoked on the last yeah. show, that had nothing like the Cuban flavor. Where we were yeah. all like we were saying, all I don't wrong. know what it all is, but it's edition. definitely not yeah. Cuban. I was listening yeah. to it like cringing. We were all like, it's definitely not Cuban. <laughs> yeah. It's your average Nicaraguan Dominican filler. And it was like a, a special limited edition Monte Cristo. Was it Edmundo? I believe it was limited Edmundo, edition. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, completely off on that one. <laughs> Swing and miss. The paper was in here. Yeah, we, we were totally wrong on that one. Um, onto my list. So this is one that Ben gifted me the last time we did the show. Um, have you guys had this? The Lito Gomez Diaz 2008 Chisel Puro. Is this like a like a Colorado colored wrapper? Yes. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of this one. 
I liked it. It wasn't a wow cigar, but it was a solid smoke. No, I remember smoking one last year or the year before, and I remember thinking it was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had ones that are very good, and I can't put this my one finger I, the on one whether I had it was, was a, what'd you say, it was 2008? Yeah. 2008, yeah. This one was See, flat. I don't know if it was a This one was flat for me. The one I smoked, like, I didn't finish it. It was just boring. Well, I'll say this. I got a nice balance of leather, cedar, and spice. Second, third, brought some red pepper in the flavor profile. Um, burn and draw were perfect. Um, now, with the chisel, Tim, did you just clip it at the I end? I just clipped it with a yeah. straight cut. That's what I do with these, yeah. Yeah, I generally just cut chisels with a straight cut. Um, probably about a quarter of an inch in off the cap. So yeah. that's usually what I do. Um, I, go, I usually cut a little more into the cigar, like distance wise. Mm hmm. Um, if it's a regular Parejo, you know, you just kind of want to clip a little bit of the cap, yeah. obviously. Yeah, but yeah. with the, the, the chisel, I tend to cut a you little more, so it opens up a little. Draw. Yeah. It's not going to draw otherwise, yeah. yeah. An interesting thing that you guys might want to try is try punching the top and the bottom of the chisel. I have seen people do that. I think Ben did that on the show a couple weeks back. Yeah. It, they yeah. hammer you with smoke, yeah. and the flavor really concentrates on your tongue and the top of your mouth, yep. which is kind of interesting. So interesting. try it. Try I'm going to try that next time. Yeah, yeah, I am too. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah, I like it. I say the fire. I, I liked it. Um, it was actually CA's number three pick for 2008, believe it or not, which I did not know when I smoked it. I didn't even know what I was smoking when yeah. I smoked it. I had to go back with the band and, and try to find yeah. what it was because I forgot. Yeah, I had one of these kicking around my humidor. I think um, it's... Um, if you come across them, though, it's worth grabbing I, a few. I, I would agree with your fire because, I, like I said, this was the second one I smoked, and the, yeah. the first one I smoked was better, so maybe it was just a little... Either an inconsistency or just my palate that day. I did like the 2003 Double Lajero chisels that Smokey well, yeah, yeah, gave yeah, us yeah, much yeah, better. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Um, anyways, moving on. What do you got, Paul? Uh, everyone needs a Stogie Santa in their life. That's just a little more to We happen to have the same one. Yes, we all have the same Stogie Santa. You know, We don't all fit on his lap at the same time. No, we don't. Yeah, he gets uh, it's pretty painful. But uh, Paul Camarian, 15th anniversary torpedo. I had uh, amazing sweetness in the first third, almost like a fruity kind yeah. of flavor I got from it. Great spice, nice finish, very strong on the finish. Oh, yeah. Very powerful, um, which I liked. I'm saying fiver now. I really wanted to say box worthy, but for some reason I was just leaning towards fiver. I, 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 don't, I, I don't know why. I would agree, and it might... Tell me what you think about this. It might be box worthy if I'd never had a connoisseur. Could be because the the connoisseurs are are better. <laughs> so what you're saying is <laughs> yes. the bar has been set high. The Reserva Exclusiva, I, I think, yeah. is yeah. Paul Grimarian yeah. has set his bar extremely high. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you know, like I said, it, it's a really really good smoke. But if had I, had I not had the Symphony Blend or the the Reserva Exclusive Blend, I think it would be box worthy in so my opinion. I have here from the Stogie Guys review. They reviewed the Robusto in this blend. They gave it four and a half Stogies out of five, and they said it has a Nicaraguan wrappers. Dominican binders and filler leaves from the Dominican farms that grew tobacco for the inaugural Paul Gamarians. Interesting. So now, what's the story of this stick? Is it available now? Was it available uh, a while ago? Do you know? If you have a Stogie Santa in your life, <laughs> ah, they they're, are they're available. available now to us. To us, okay. Rhode Island, <laughs> Rhode Island prices fifteen ninety nine. Okay. Yeah, that was the other thing that surprised me. It's more expensive than yes. the connoisseur too. Yeah. So, but it was good. It was very it was good. Very I good. would buy more, and I would put them in my I, humidor. I think eye. for me, the the flavors up front were really good, and it, it changed. And I wasn't as big a fan as the flavors that it changed into. There was just something that it wasn't off, but there was just something that didn't kind of hold my real like fascination for the cigar. The way that his other, I guess it's a smoking experience. The smoking experience wasn't up to par with some of his other sticks. I agree. So, I agree. But he's having said that now, I'm saying fiber, but I want to smoke another one and really pay attention to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, and see if it's it deserves the box. It's tough to rate a cigar. I would, not, I would not hesitate to smoke many more of them. To yeah, be I, yeah with you. I agree. If somebody gave it to me, I yeah. would certainly not like yeah. turn my head at it. Absolutely. But it, is that a hint? What do you mean? I'll give them to you. Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> I'm joking, man. <laughs> If they were presented to me <laughs> for purchase, I would not hesitate to purchase a few. Fair enough. Yeah, as a I matter agree. of fact, I agree. Yeah, the, and the price tag is a little steep, and I think that 
that does kind of factor into. I mean, if you really yeah. factor in that fifty nine nine price tag, it makes it really hard to say box worthy. If they come around between ten or twelve dollars, it makes it a little easier to say box worthy. What size is the so, box? Is it ten or is it twenty? Uh, I believe not, it's twenty. Yeah, it's probably a twenty. I believe it's twenty. Yeah, that's a pricey box. I do, but I agree the um, the connoisseurs or the uh, the symphony twentieth uh, are are better. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, just another one on my list, the Julius Caesar Robusto. This is a solid Robusto at 10 bucks. I mean, this is something I could smoke like any time. For me, this wasn't something you have to be in the mood for. No. Nope. Like, if you're in the mood well, to smoke, you're in the mood for a Julius Caesar Robusto, in my yeah, opinion. It's just got that great, like, versatile flavor profile. It's very smooth. Uh, the wrapper's a Havana Seed Ecuadorian. Uh, binder is Central American. The filler is Central American... And uh, the origin, of course, Dominican Republic. And that comes from our, our good friends at Nice Tight Ash. So they did a review uh, on the Robusto size in, in this uh, cigar. So, again, solid stick. Smoke it any time. Yep. I, I mean, was, I don't know if I'd smoke it for breakfast, but it's got that kind of like you can pick it up any time and be satisfied. I was actually very surprised to see them in there because when that came out, that was uh, for Diamond Crown mm, um, lounges yeah. only. Yeah. So I was, and I'd been trying to get one because uh, I like the Maximus, and uh, so I'd been trying to get one, and then I walked into Joyos, and it was bang right there. Yep, yep. So I was happy to get it, and and I agree, very very solid. The price point is perfect. <laughs> you know when I said when they, when they first started carrying them, and I tried them, I tried the pyramid size. I said, you know, for someone wanting to to spend. Uh, not a, I guess a, uh, not a premium, but you, you know, if you're going to spend some money on a smoke, uh, I'm good. Thank you. Yep. The um, this is a this is a great line. Like it's it's right up there with like a Padron um, and some of those ones that kind of command a little higher of a price tag. Um, if you're in the mood for something like that and smoking stuff in that similar price range, this one stood out to me yep. as something that you're always going to be like, you finish smoking and you you feel satisfied. Like, well, I just had a, I just had a good smoke. Remind yeah. me, you know? but I believe that was a slow burner too, man. That was a long. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. For, yeah. for a five inch cigar, yeah. it was construction impressive. and burn. Have been yeah, impactful. on the two I smoke. I mean, they were just, yeah, not even close to yeah. any kind of construction problem. So excellent. Go ahead, Tim. Uh, Liga Provada, dirty rat. Um, so I wrote sometimes after a rough day, you just want to grab something you know is going to satisfy and relax you. Now, this is from the January 2012 release. And I'm going to be honest. When these came out, when I bought these in January, I thought they were a bit harsh compared to some previous releases. So I put them down. This is the first time I've grabbed one since. I can say 100% they are smoking so much better right now. They have smoothed right out. They are what we come to know from, a, you know, know and expect from a dirty rat. Um... Definitely box worthy. Enjoyed every last second of it. I really needed it that night, and um, it hit the spot. Yeah, those are phenomenal. Yeah, I haven't had any of the 2012 releases, but I have some, maybe five or six left from the 2011 release. It's tough. Once you smoke one, it's tough not to go back and smoke another one the next day because they're so darn tasty. I mean, I really I know. enjoy them. I know. Um, it's the best of the Unico series, in my opinion. Um, but they are pricey. Um, 12 bucks a whack. I mean, for Corona, for Corona. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, fantastic experience. Recommend it if you get a chance. So excellent. Uh, I smoked the Cro Magnon Anthropology. Yeah, I want to hear about this. This was a nice smoke, great finish, awesome flavors, very slow burner. I mean, this stick is like solid. Yeah, like you could whack it on the table. Want to talk about good construction? This was yeah, and the, incredible. The, the draw and burn the draw was great. Was perfect, yeah, but perfect. it was so densely packed, and it's it's that's a good combination. Yeah, um, making it I think a really slow burner. I think Ben from Nice Tide Ash said, you know, you got to kind of dry box these for a little while before you smoke yeah. them. Um, this is uh, a Nicaraguan wrapper. Um, oh no, I'm sorry, Origin Nicaragua. The wrapper is U.S. Connecticut broadleaf Maduro. The binder is Cameroon. And the filler is Nicaraguan, uh, both uh, Esteli, Condega, and Esteli. So I guess Esteli's Sorry. in there twice. <laughs> I sent you those notes. Sorry about oh, that. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I'll, yeah. ta I'll take the hit for that. <laughs> you know, what a unique blend, though, man. That, that is, is a really yeah. unique it yeah. is. blend, if you, if you just look at it and say, wow. It, Cameroon it, it's interesting when you smoke it. I get a lot of those, what I would consider, like, Nicaraguan-type flavors. Yes. And it's interesting to see the, where the various uh, bits and pieces of this cigar come from. 
but it's got a definite Nicaraguan flair, although the, the wrapper is a U.S. Connecticut broadleaf. And I definitely picked up some of that Cameroon in it. Mm. I mean, it was in the background. It wasn't in the forefront. Like it's some like Cameroon. I would say it had that little hint of Cameroon sweetness. But it was yeah. there. Um, you can definitely... There's a, some subtleties to that cigar. But, um, I would say fiber. I agree. For sure. Yeah. Possibly box where they'd have to smoke more. But uh, I, I think fiber. age would be really kind to one of these sticks. I mean, yeah. they they just burn and, and smoke so well. I'd like to like tuck a couple away for a few years and... Yep. I bet you they would. Uh, they would kick it up quite a few notches. I actually went to buy some last week and was told they were sold out. So yeah, excellent. Um, but they will be re released in August of yeah. this year. And this is a, a a boutique blend that you can only get from like one website or something like that. Um, they are available at a lot of be- brick and mortars. Okay. Um, but yeah, you can go directly to the manufacturer site and order them from there too. So awesome. Um, I believe Bill Burris from the cigar snapshot dot com sent he sent his yes, thank you, Bill, for this. Yes, it was, it was definitely a great smoke. definitely a good uh, a, a good uh, stick that I had never had before. So it was a good for me a change of pace. Very satisfying. That's yes. how I describe yes. it. So, uh, all right. You want, uh, you know what? Uh, you want to do one more? Or yeah, go you, for it. Man. Okay, so uh, just along the lines of kind of boutique blends that came out recently, the four kicks from Crown Heads. Uh, this is a great like. I'm hanging out on my deck kind of smoke, you know, uh, nice flavors, great construction, um, excellent flavors, fiber for sure. I, I think if the price is right, this is this is a box worthy kind of thing, because this is a great just hanging out, yep. easy smoking kind of thing. Um, doesn't necessarily command your full attention, but I could see where age would bring out a lot more of those subtle flavors that I got from it. Nice. I really, really enjoyed smoking it. And I was outside of my deck while I was... Um, while I was smoking it, so I, it, it's just it's an awesome smoke. I smoked the I believe the robusto and the toro um, in, in this blend, and I I enjoyed both of them. Like it just presents those great, nice, easy to identify nice. with flavors. Um, I've yet to try those. I need, I need to. You definitely should. you do you have some? No, I do not. Oh, I thought you did. Oh, we we split. I think I think Stogie Santa and you split an order. Yeah, yeah. we did. Yeah. Just to try them, we'll have to get some more so we can smoke and talk about them on the show. The wrapper is uh, Ecuadorian Habano, and the uh, binder filler is from Nicaragua. Excellent. I've heard great things about them. Yeah, there was a lot of great. there was a lot of press on them yeah. last year. Well, they yeah. made um, a lot of top ten lists last year too. Yeah, they were good. Yeah. yeah, no, they were. Had a lot of press, so. and I believe they have a new blend coming out. It just came out. One of the they two. do, yeah, they do. So it's a solid smoke. Um, speaking of epic smokes, um, I had the NHC Selection Limitada Capper Especial. This is made by Pete Johnson for our New Havana Cigars dot com. Um, ben Lee from Nice Tight Ash sent us a bunch of smokes last week. This mm. is one of them. Thank this you, is, Ben. Thank you, Ben. Um, very generous, actually, dude. I, I owe you some more smokes. Um, I had always wanted to try these because I had heard they were so darn good. Made by Pete Johnson, same wrapper as the seventh caper, but in a six and three quarter by 42 Lonsdale size. What I noted immediately was it definitely had more kick to it and more strength. And I thought a lot more of that, that <clears throat> excuse me, Rapa Spice came out in it than the seventh, which is a Corona, I believe. Or is that a Corona Gorda? Corona Gorda. It would be a Corona Gorda because yeah, I Corona think the Noea is a Corona. You are correct. Yeah. yeah. Um, equally as enjoyable as the seventh Kappa, just in a different way. Um, I know they're going to be re released. Ben told me that come the summer. I say the Fiverr, however, I only smoked one. I would need to smoke more to really mm-hmm. make a good assessment. I'm um, definitely worth checking out when they're re-released. So. Excellent. With that, why don't we do this? We'll take a little break. Then we'll come back and uh, we'll talk uh, about how our uh, poor Laranyaga Panatellas are going to finish out for us and uh, talk about the next stick and then uh, finish up with our Cigars of the Week. we got so many cigars to talk about. We decided just to do Cigars of the Week and, and, the, contest and, and the contest winners. So we'll break right now and uh, we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Stogie Geek Show. You can visit us on the web at www.stogiegeeks.com for all the latest cigar reviews. Listen to our audio broadcasts of the show and our video broadcasts as well. That's right. Each and every episode of the Stogie Geeks 
You can download in iTunes either the audio or video versions of the show. We record everything live here in the studio. You get to see everyone from uh, myself, Tim, Mark Jr., and Stogie Santa, and occasionally Ben, which we were just uh, just uh, talking about. So... Uh, thanks everyone for listening. Find us on Facebook, Stogie Geeks, and Twitter at sign Stogie Geeks. How did everyone's poor Laranyaga Panatella pan out for you, so to speak? Fantastic, man. That thing is smoking good. Um, considering what nine, ten months old now. Mm. Um, I, I loved every second of it. I nubbed it. Paul, you're still going, I'm man. Still you got, nubbing it. You got like three quarters of an inch left there. Yeah. How, how are you not burning your lips right now? I, I smoked them down further than this. Actually. It's an art. Uh, there's a, there's a, that's what it's she con- said joke there somewhere, but yeah, whatever. It, there's conditioning. You know, it's conditioning <laughs> your fingers. You and burn your, your skin in your mouth long enough. You can just, yeah. I'm just like that. Um, Speaking of which, I, I pulled a little bit of tobacco out from it. It was kind of sticking out to the end. Yeah, hey, look at know. that. Check that out. Yeah, I've been I've been doing that lately. Um, not on my list, but I I, I did smoke um, a La Aurora Ruby Tubo. Okay. And um, it, this one's probably uh, at least a year or two in my humidor, and it was it was a great smoke. It was I mean nice nice flavors associated with this uh, with this cigar, but uh, the draw was a little tight. Okay. And I got about a third of the way into it, and then that's unusual for a lot or man. It, it it was tight, and yeah. so I started. And I don't know. I don't think I would recommend that people do this. <laughs> this isn't something that uh, you should take lightly. Um, but you know, I've got I've got a, a box or so of these, so I was like, well, this one's being a little tight. Let me see what happens if I dig around in the uh, in the end of it with my poker. Tenacious. Yeah, and you kind of just like dig a little, pull a little tobacco out, and like little leaves will fall out. And if you can get a hold of one that feels like it has a stem on it and pull it out, I pulled out a stem that was two or three inches long from it. Oh, crap. Yank that bad boy right out, right? And then the draw opened up tremendously. Interesting. I think there's something to be said for cigars that are plugged. And the reason that they're plugged, right, is because there's too much tobacco in there and you can't get a good draw. Sure. Right? And draw pokers, I I think, take kind of different uh, approaches to it. You know, there are some draw pokers that you'll push all the way through and they'll kind of just push a hole and push some of the tobacco out to create a, a hole. Me personally, I don't, I don't, I mean, sometimes that works for me. I think a lot of times it doesn't work for me because while you may push a hole through the middle of it, yeah. that hole just naturally wants to close back up. The tobacco kind of expands, yeah. especially as it heats up and it tends to close that hole back up. Oh, you get flame down into your mouth, which is the worst right yeah. there. <laughs> I have seen some draw pokers <clears throat> that have like a little hook on them. Like it's a, a solid rod, but there's like these little ridges in them that are almost like little hooks so that when you push it in, it actually will scrape some tobacco out. And, and that's pretty cool. A mutual friend, Walt, showed me one that had like essentially a little hook like right in the middle of it. It's like a little divot in the middle uh, or one or two of those that would just pull some tobacco out. I've had great success with the digging method, as I'll call it, but I dig a little tobacco, find a little stem. And it's not always easy to identify and just gently kind of pull. And I got that from halfwheel.com. Halfwheel.com actually has a couple of reviews, and I don't remember which stick or when it was, but some of the reviews I remember reading, and they took a picture of the stem that they pulled out of the middle of the cigar. I remember that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you probably remember reading a couple of reviews where they did that, so um, yeah, I think that's interesting. Also, what I also like to do with the tobacco I pull, I like to feel how wet or dry it is. This one seems to be perfectly humidified. It's just a little bit damp. Sometimes you pull them out and they feel really wet. That can yeah, be a sign yeah. that your cigars are over humidified. Um, also, I like to um, take some flame to them, light them on fire, and, and sniff the smoke that comes from them. That's always interesting. And you pick up some yeah. different flavors. You'll be like, wow, that's different you know, aromas. You can pick out yeah. some of the different aromas yeah. and then be able to more easily pick them out of your cigar. I don't know. That's just me. You know, it's I don't see a lot of written or, or spoken about doing that. Yep. Um, so I think it's interesting. I mean, a lot of people ask me, oh, how do you pick up some like leather or a flavor out of a cigar? And no, I've never chewed on a piece of leather before, but it's 60% of flavor, and I'm just throwing it out there, percentage, is aroma. It is, yeah. it is scent. Um, so it's very interesting to do what you, exactly what yeah. you're doing. So this um, was a little sweet to me. Kind of pass that around. Kind of let, you let some of the smoke like go up into your nostrils. It smells good. I can smell it from here. Man. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's got a very pleasant flavor. Now you won't. Always, ah, I you burn get, myself. Yeah. You won't yeah. always get like. You probably need to put a little more flame to that. Tim. Use caution. It's fire. 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 So I that cigar was excellent. I would say. I, yeah, I enjoyed it, man. I would say the Paul Arnaga Panatella box worthy. For I sure. agree. Yep. Absolutely. I'll buy a box. I think you can get cabs of fifty of those. Um, I believe so. I can tell you in a minute if you like. I think the Petit Coronas you can too. I, so I know for the Petit Coronas you can. So, so Mark Jr., we're, maybe... we're sparking up a new stick here. Why don't you tell us all about it? It is the La Aurora 100 Años uh, Lancero. It's a... Uh, uh, were you going to say something? No. Nope. Oh, okay. It was uh, comm- It was the, the cigar to commemorate... The blend, for that matter, to commemorate the 100th anniversary of La Aurora. Um... The yeah, size awesome, is awesome blend. Yeah, the size is very unusual too. Very limited. Very hard to get. I would say the flavors are kind of un, uh, not unusual, but very distinct. Yes. Um, Oops. Sorry. I've had multiple sizes. I can honestly say the Lancero is my favorite. Although Paul, you smoked another size recently that you really liked. The Preferito is the Preferito freaking amazing. And you're not the first person to tell me that. Yeah. Um, I've had the, I bought five of those when I was in Pennsylvania. I just bought five more today. And you gifted me one, and I, I bought a couple more today. Yeah. At fifteen dollars a stick, it's a little, they're steep, but they are steep. good. Um, but I've had the Robusto, I've had the Bellicoso, and I've had the, is it a Toro or a... Churchill? Churchill. Churchill, Churchill, I believe, yeah. And the Churchill I had problems with. Yeah. I did too. They hit I a miss. Too. But the Robusto, I've also had, I've had the Corona, and I've also had the Bellicoso. Those were all yeah. awesome. I haven't had the Corona, it's probably the only size I haven't had to this point. Yeah. It's a ditto. So, um, but a, a fa- it's just an unbelievable blend. Cien Años from... La Aurora, if you can get your hands on them in any size, probably except the Churchill. Yeah, stay with um, the Churchill. get after them. Yeah, get on them. I can honestly say this is probably one of the most, um, one of my favorite Lanceros of all time. Um, I've smoked a few of them in the last few weeks, and they're smoking awesome. And why is that, Tim? Because I think it's the same reason it's one of my favorite Lanceros, and probably everyone else's too. Why is that? It pours smoke. Oh yeah, like yep. no other Lancero on the freaking planet. And this it, bad boy, the draw pours on these things smoke. is smoke. It pours Impeccable. flavor too. Yeah, um, and it is not a short smoke. I think the last time I smoked this it was close to two hours before I finished it. So it's gonna be a long, long night for us. I guess it's a long night. That's right. Now, why are we smoking these now, Mark? Yes, Mark Junior. Yes. Well, I bought a box because, um, well, first of all, the opportunity presented itself. But uh, I bought them to commemorate my daughter's birthday and I, I th- or birth for that matter. And I thought. Hundred Cien Años, hundred years is a is a fitting tribute. You know, we all would hope that our children live long, fruitful, healthy lives. So that you, was my thought behind it. You used your unborn daughter to convince Stogie Santa to sell you a box, and my wife yeah. <laughs> to let me buy one. <laughs> now that is epic, folks, right there. <laughs> High five, man! Awesome. <laughs> I, can't, I can't blame you, man. I t- what did, what do these run you a stick? Uh, I believe they retail were eleven dollars. I was going to say eleven ninety nine. Eleven ninety nine. Yeah, yeah. Is that retail eleven ninety nine? Yeah. Um, worth nice. it. Worth every penny. <sighs> every penny. Every so, penny. We'll see how it goes. <clears throat> Onward and upward. Oh, speaking of La Aurora, La Aurora Cameroon Robusto. I want to say, hey, nope. These came from Stogie Santa. <laughs> these, so these probably have a few years of age on them, most likely. I want to say I bought almost a full box of these bad boys yep. because they just, I smoked one. I was like, they were just amazing. This is the this, one where it says Cameroon right on the wrapper, right? Awesome yes. Cameroon yes. sweetness, sweetness. Burn this anytime. Well balanced box worthy for sure. This is a Cameroon wrapper, a Nicaraguan uh, binder and a Dominican Nicaraguan filler. There is a review from the Stogie guys out there. And let's see what the, the Stogie guys gave this uh, bad boy for a review. Uh, if this uh, will load to give the Stogie Stogie Review website uh, a little props, uh, it's still loading here. Brian Hewitt from uh, StogieReview.com did uh, did the full review on it. Uh, this has a different band than the one I uh, than what I had. I've noticed that about some of them though. Some of them do have different bands. Does yeah. it say Cameroon on it. Or? Uh, it's no. a very. It doesn't. No, it doesn't say Cameroon on it. Not all of them do, dude. Yeah, it's a it's very it's just a, like the Maduros. We we're talking. That's about got the, the band like the 107 blend on it. It does. So he said, uh, liked it. Yes, buy it again. Yes, recommend it. Yes. So cool. I think that that's probably my second favorite La Aurora. 
to the, Cam- the Cameroon, the Cameroon. To the, yeah. to the yeah. Cianonios. Any, 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 of, their, any of their Cameroons yeah. are just amazing. They I agree. The I agree. The, the Lancero yeah. that, that we well, did I a trade Well, I think I reviewed the Preferito Cameroon, excuse me, on the last show. Yep. I wrote an Solid. actual official review on the site on it. Solid. Yeah. Solid smokes. Should do, should be in your rotation. There should be some in your humidor. Yeah, very, I, I, very refreshing stick. Yeah, it it, 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 I it, I, it they their Cameroon wrap stuff is medium just body. You you it was a medium that? body. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Um, another one from Ben Lee of Nights Tight Ash, the Emilio AF1 Robusto. I had smoked the AF2 a while back. I think Big Al had gifted to me, but never got a chance to try the AF1, which is darker. It's more of a Maduro. It has a Mexican San Andreas wrapper, Nicaraguan binder, and also Nicaraguan fillers. Uh, I enjoyed it more than the AF2. Much more rich flavored. The burn was sharp. The draw was great. Um, I certainly want to revisit a solid smoke for the money, especially if you enjoy those typical San Andreas Maduro flavors. Um, I recommend grabbing a fiver to try. I think I'm going to. Um, Again, I, I enjoyed it more than the AF2. Paul, have you had a chance to smoke the F one or? I uh, I smoked the Grimal- Grimalkin? Grim- Grimalkin. Grimalkin. Yeah, I thought that was really good. I don't think I've smoked any of the AF series right. one or two. I believe I have. Well, I definitely have the same one that Ben sent you, yeah. and I have a couple of other ones. Um, I believe uh, Joy has got a couple of samples in. Yep. Uh, and they were uh, gifted to me to try. So I I want to say I have an AF one and an AF two and. Reading your review of it and the fact that Ben sent it to us, it's definitely on my short list of stuff um, to put some fire to. So yeah, he also sent us a Gremlin Toro, I believe, which I really want to revisit because I had smoked the Robusto, I believe, a while yeah. back, but the, it would not draw right for me. Yeah, and I could pick up some really great flavors and some nice complexity in it, but because of the draw, I couldn't really fully appreciate it. So this week, I'm taking that bad boy down because. Um, what I could find, what I could pick up of it, I really enjoyed it. So mm. I'm, I'm curious to see what it can do. Nice. Once it, once it burns right. So, uh, let's see. Next up on my list, Camacho 1118, Connecticut. This is still my favorite Connecticut. Now, still, after still, all this time, after all this time, this is my favorite. It's a Honduran Puro. Just a great smoke. I'm curious to see if the newer ones smoke as good as some of the ones I've had in my humidor for over a year. Yep, yep. Because this one came from my humidor, obviously, and it, it was over a year old. And um, it's just a great... Uh, the size, the flavor, burn, construction, it, with coffee in the morning. Now, it, let's be honest. Just, we smoked a lot of these when we were noobs. I, and I, that's why I'm going back and smoking so them now. Do you have fond memories of them? Or I know. Really? I'm just saying it's a great smoke. It is a great smoke. Don't get me wrong. I still I, enjoy it. It's still yeah. one of my favorite Connecticut's. Cool. If not my favorite. No, Mark Jr., you weren't a big fan. Did you finally smoke one? Yet. Oh, you still haven't say, smoked he, one yet. He still hasn't smoked one yet. I mean, we talk, talked about it last show. I didn't put one in your bag, but I think I may have a few left of my from my collection. I'll go dig them out for you. If I can smoke an Opus, you can smoke that. Okay. Nah. It's all fair, man. All right. All right. Fair. Fair. <laughs> okay. All right. Because I get the same look on my face when when we're talking about Connecticut rappers. I know rappers you do. Yeah, I, I can see it in the face is. right now. Nobody else can. Right? Are you on? Oh, you are on video. Okay. I am on video. All right. Um, all right onward. Um, Lou Rodriguez, Maduro, Reserve, Bomb Bomb. A four and three quarter by 42 Petit Corona comprised of Nicaraguan binder. And filler with a Mexican San Andreas wrapper, another Mexican San Andreas mm-hmm. wrapper. One of several this week, I'm actually. Um, one of the most incredible pre-light aromas of earth, chocolate, and coffee that just made me salivate before I even lit this thing up. This was also from Ben Lee. It's in your care package, Paul. If mm. you haven't smoked it, check it out. Um, the flavor profile matched um, the pre-light aroma. Um, added a little bit of spice to it. It was a powerhouse. Definitely after a meal. Um, took me an hour to take it down. Full strength, full body, burn and draw, A+. Plus. I say a fiver, possibly box worthy, considering its aging potential. Because I think this stick has a lot of aging potential. Um, certainly going to revisit. I really was impressed with the stick. So Nice. Thank you, Ben. Again. Viaje C4. A year old now. This is the uh, the little box press thing that has a cap on both ends. Yeah, you don't know which end to light. And you don't know which end to light, because yep. the band is in the exact middle. 
of the stick. I mean, they may shift as they kind of get bounced around in the humidor if they're, you know, shuffling. So I was confused as to which end to actually light. Now this I mean, I released. guess you could you could clip both ends, because you do have to clip both ends yeah, anyway. Yeah, it's not going to burn otherwise. You could clip both ends and then see which one, like, draws differently with the, the cold draw. I don't know. I just, I, I kind of flipped a coin. I was like, yeah. I'll, I don't know. It confused me, man. I'll let, it confused me. I'll <laughs> it's let too much in. for me to handle. These are much better than I remember. Aged has really evened the smoke out. It's a lot more balanced. You can pick up a lot of subtle flavors. I got earth and a touch of cocoa. Okay. And this is another one that's solid packed. Yes, it is. And yes, it smokes is. forever. I would say it's medium bodied in strength. It's not strong. It's not super strong. It, it's medium full. I would yeah. say it's medium full. Um, now, did you smoke the family of friends this year? Uh, was that the really super special one? Yes. Only the box press. only got one box of 15 each. Yeah, I have one of those and I haven't smoked it yet. It did remind me of the C4. A nicer C4. Nice. But I, I don't nice. know, maybe I'm talking about my you-know-what. But yeah. um, a more balanced C4. I don't know why I feel like I'm saving that one. What, the family of friends? Yeah, yeah me too. I feel like I'm, I'm saving it too and I don't know why. It was a good smoke. It didn't wow me. But it was a good smoke. Um, I mean, do we really want to know what it's like when it's aged? Because it just might piss us off that we can't I, get anymore. I would take you know a daisy I mean? cutter any day over it, frankly. It's true, Mark Jr. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling it might be that kind of experience. Smoking now. Uh, yeah. I, I honestly well, think the age is not going to do that stick much good. Yeah. I think it's already been aged. Now, but. I also smoked a Viaje TNT from 2011. Okay. Same release date as the C4. Yes, they came out at the same time. Now... Stogie Sandy gave me one of the original Viaje TNTs, and that was, I have to say, that was like an oasis. That was an oasis. It really? wasn't even like an oasis. For it me, was. that was an oasis. That smoke was freaking awesome. It was unbelievable. The new TNTs I smoked when they first came out, they were not good. They were not aged long enough. Meh. Yeah, I smoked quite a few. Yeah. It, it was just a lot of youngness. So I waited almost a year, and I smoked this one today, actually. And it had a great start. Mild flavors, earthy, very smooth. Um, not a lot of strong flavors uh, in the first half. Now, towards the second half, it fell apart. I mean, it, it didn't keep the same flavors. I couldn't keep it lit, and it just got blah. And uh, this is a, a sun-grown Corojo wrapper with a Nicaraguan filler and a Nicaraguan binder. So... Yeah, you were having some trouble with that today. It kept yeah, going exactly. out on Like, you. I need to put more fluid. I think at one point I told you to leave it alone, man. Just let it go. <laughs> I, didn't have, I didn't have time to light up another one, so I was just, it was, you yeah. know, putting fire to it. It comes to a point it. where it gets frustrating, yeah. you know. Um, I, I needed to buy some more uh, butane when I left. <laughs> let me say this about Viajes. Though. They are much like some other um, sticks out there, Liga Provada sticks of mine, where they do absorb a lot of moisture. I, at least I find. Um, I don't know if you dry boxed it at all, but... Um, it was in my travel pack with a Bavita for a, a few days. It should be all right. Yeah, then. yeah, it should have been all right. All right. Well, there goes that theory. Well, put it this way: it was in the same box as my Elogio Siri Habano Corona Extra. Okay, which was a great smoke, box worthy, mild flavors, sweet touches of spice, mellow. Absolutely loved this cigar. I agree. I, I want to buy more. I think a you bought a thousand percent. The, yeah, so you smoked one of these. This was from Ben, also. Yes, it was from Ben. He sent us both the Habano and the LSV, uh, both in the Corona extra size. Mm -hmm. The LSV is the Maduro. Um, I don't. Uh, so I don't. I don't know which one I smoked. The lighter colored one. I don't know. That'd be the Habano. I took one of them and I put them in my travel humidor to smoke. All right, a couple words for you. Toasted marshmallow or berries? Which did you get? I got a more berry than that it was the LSV. That's the Habano? That's the Maduro. That's the Maduro? Yeah. I have to go look and see which Black other one's in there. One. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. The LSV is good. It was a good smoke. I, I, I tell you what, though. I, I lit this thing up, and we talked earlier about when you sometimes when you light up a smoke, yeah. and it's like... Ah, it just bites you and it's bitter and harsh and then it kind of mellows out a little bit. Yep. This one from start to finish was just phenomenal. Oh, both of them. Both of them. I, I think they're both box worthy. I think as far as boutique brands go, to compare it to everything that I smoked, Four Kicks, yep. Cro-Magnon, I mean, not to not to diss anyone, obviously. Elogio is my favorite of these like boutique brands, brands that they aren't everywhere. They're not being sold everywhere. Nope. They're newer boutique brands. Elogio sure Elogio how... knocked it out of the park for yeah. me. <laughs> I'm not sure how new they are. I know they're a small family from Esseli, Nicaragua, because I did a little research on them. Mm -hmm. I know there's only about 12 retailers in the U.S. that sell yeah. them, per their site, anyways. Um, 
I smoked both last Saturday. I took down the Habano with coffee in the morning. It's a mild and medium bodied smoke. Took down See, that's the that's the one I think I smoked. I think I smoked the Habano. Yeah. Um, I smoked the LSV later at night. Um, enjoyed both equally as much. However, the Habano is more my profile with the mild and medium smokes these days. Yeah, I agree with Ben. And ben I can tell weird. you right now, Monday morning, I started dropping emails and phone numbers to every single retailer that are on their site. And by 10 a.m., I had ordered a box. Yeah. It, um, it, they are. They're special. They, they are. are special. Uh, I Mark agree Jr., with that. I'm going to bring you one. So I can't wait to try it, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm always excited to try something new. I, I think, mean, I have to say, especially when people talk like this. Between, about between Tim and I, as far as, I mean, not to just compare it to boutique blends, but as far as the boutique stuff goes, this one is like at the top of the list. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, Stogie Santa agrees. He smoked them. Super, him. super um, impressed. Um, I wish he could have been here tonight to talk about it, but unfortunately, he's not feeling well. Um, but he agreed, and I'm, frankly, I'm going to push him to get him in the shop. Um, more local. I think the most closest retailer to us is New Hampshire, um, with the majority of them yeah, being I, I want these available so, to me at all times. But I did send you guys um, a couple of brick-and-mortar retailers earlier today that carry them and have them in stock, so if you want them. Um, I tell you what, I'm not one to kind of go seek things out like that, but... This is one I think I'm going to be seeking out. And it's 150 for the Corona Extra, it's $150 a box of 24 That's $6 a stick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you factor price in this equation. Yeah. It's a no-brainer. That's why I pulled the trigger right away on Monday morning. Did right. it have... It had almost a... The flavors weren't so much Cuban-esque, but the, um, the strength profile... Was. I found to be a very kind of Cuban-esque, like a... You've eaten breakfast, and now you're going to have a little coffee, and you want a cigar Absolutely. with it. Absolutely, yep. And, and that, the Habano definitely fit that flavor profile through and through. I got the, a lot of toasty nuttiness off the Habano with some wood mm-hmm. later on in the profile. Yeah. Um, and I think Ben hit it. He said toasted marshmallows. It, and then it I, definitely it had that sweetness. Almost like an Espana kind of. Less spice than Espana, yeah, but yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. In, in the Espana, I tell that you what. It makes me more excited because those are... The Great. petite, the petite robusto in the Espana. I have almost a box of those now, and I'm super happy Corona. about that. Yeah. <laughs> I say Corona. I, just, I gave, I gave, my, I actually had three or four Coronas, and I, I gave Mark Junior because he was like, I he was just, so, I just missed a fiver of the Corona up on BOTL the other day. I had, I had messaged the guy. He's like, you literally just missed oh, it. Oh, our friend at uh, Stogie Fresh reviewed uh, the yes, Doc. Doc. Yeah. The Doc. Yes. The Doc's awesome. Um, we, do we have a, a sweeper from him, or we sent him one, or did he send us one yet? Or? Uh, yes, I have it. Okay. We probably should have played that during the break. Yeah, if you if you want to send it to me while, while, while I'm you talking. Yeah. Um, so The Doc over at Stogie Fresh did, uh, it, it was one of the first podcasts I listened to from The Doc, and it, it was just, it was awesome. And he really, he, I mean, he chooses a cigar, and he chooses a blend of coffee. Uh, to pair with it, or sometimes All just liquor. scotch, you know, or liquor. liquor. Yep. For this particular one, he chose coffee. Um, and the one I listened to, I mean, he goes full on in depth into the cigar. I mean, you know, we talk a lot about a lot about s- different cigars, like on this show, for example. Um, but he picks one, and he just like hammers it home in like unbelievable amounts of information. He talked about the economy with Cuban cigars, how they got started appealing to the European market, how the European market the likes to smoke yep. Cubans, why Quesada chose the sizes they did, the blending, how the blend first came about. Unbelievable. Un- uh, unbelievable how much information was in there. And he smoked the, uh, the Petit Robusto, which is my favorite size in the Espana blend. And um, it, it just was raving about the, the flavors. And then he went in depth into the coffee and this Ethiopian coffee and how we brewed it and where the beans come from and how long he roasts. He roasts his own coffee beans. I mean, this is a man that's very serious about his uh, his smokes and his coffee and his It's one of the things liquor. I love about that podcast is his pairings. He does very well with yeah, pairings. Yeah. And, um, and I agree. The Petit Robusto from Quesada, and it reminded me a lot of the Elogio um, in that similar kind of flavor yeah. strength profile, just just phenomenal. I mean, if you want to have a, a smoke that you're going to go to often, um, I think the both the Elogio and the the Quesada uh, Petit Robusto, which I probably also smoked in the past two weeks as well, yep. uh, are just great great picks. Well, I told you the Corona today that I've I had ten. You just gave me three, so it means I have thirteen. And I would he's not, counting, folks. That I means would, they're good. I would not hesitate for a moment. To buy another box of twenty. Yep, yep. 
and have over 30 of them in my humidor. I mean, that's a serious, like, space commitment. To Absolutely. have 30 of them I in your humidor, that. and I would not hesitate for a moment no, I agree. to dedicate that space to them. Yeah. I would buy more Petit Robustos. Like I said, I almost have a box. I would almost... Now, my- I'm sure they're going to re-release these things at some point, right? Yeah, yeah and hopefully they're the same, because they're special. Yeah, they are. they are. I know a place that has a box of those Petit Robustos. Right on top of a box of the Coronas that I want to buy. Yeah, maybe we should go in and just buy both. <laughs> Take a field trip. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> a Stogie Geeks field trip. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Do I maybe, need we'll, a permission maybe we'll have more negotiation power if yeah. we're like, we'll buy everything you have. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I think we definitely should. Either that or the person behind the counter will look at you with dollar signs in their eyes, so... Could go either way, man. That story, that's probably what's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is true. All so right. yeah, um, props to the the Stogie Fresh podcast. Uh, we talked about the uh, Stogie. Uh, what is the other one? Cigar uh, Snapshot. Yep, is the other one which we've also uh, kind of made friends with, and it, it, it's great to you know it's great to talk to other people that are doing podcasts, and they're definitely two that I. I'll tell you what, man. Ben and Nice Tight Ash does some great video reviews too. I watch them on a weekly absolutely. basis. Absolutely, I subscribe to those as well. Um, he did a really cool one this past, his most recent one, the, the CAO, CAO Choose Your Stick, yep. it was yeah. a Choose Your Stick, or whatever it was. Yeah, I forget, I forget what it was called, but yep. the Three Cigar Tin, I thought that was a pretty well, Hold pretty on, so we'll, we'll take a very short break here, and we'll play uh, something from uh, the Stogie Fresh. Hey, this is the Doc from the Stogie Fresh 5 Podcast, and you're listening to the Geeks. The Stogie Geeks with Tim and Paul. Kick back and enjoy as the geeks kick ash each week. Listen in to the regular episodes as they smoke and chat about the weekly list of Stogies. And now, back to the Stogie Geeks. Excellent. The Doc weighing in on here on the Stogie Geeks as we marched on our list of smokes. Tim, you got uh, what else you got on your list, my friend? I got a few more here. Uh, the Viaje Exclusivo Tower Cigars 45th Anniversary. Um, this is a, about a year old, a little bit more. Uh, part of the Exclusivo series. Uh, I think we talked about that last week, that series. The Robusto we talked the Robusto, about. Robusto, yeah. which is the most recent release. I also have an Exclusivo that I smoked this week. So Excellent, ahead. excellent. Um, Mark Jr., I think you're right, man. These things age fantastic, man. Uh, the smoke was so smooth and balanced. Flavors of earth chocolate. I got some dried fruit, a hint of pepper in the background. Um, not one flavor dominated the other. Um, it made it difficult to pull each flavor out because of that. But I loved every second of it. Um, was late going back to work because of it. Um, enjoyed immensely. Box worthy, box worthy, box worthy. Unfortunately... They're long gone. Haven't been released in April 2011. So, Mark Jr. I revisited the Viaje Exclusivo short. Which is the Corona? Petit Corona. Petit, Petit Corona. Corona. Yep. Yeah, okay. I have, I have two of those in my humidor. I, I, I ball on. They are phenomenal. Yeah, they were for, released for, March 2011, I believe. Okay. Around then. Yeah, I'm not exactly <clears throat> up on exactly when it came out. My notes say it was a beautiful smoke, a perfect perfect wrapper it was perfect yep. um and it had that really uh characteristic viaje spice and wood flavor okay but it had this really nice sweetness to it that was perfectly well blended in it didn't overpower any none of them overpowered the others yep um again I, easily i'd put this in a box worthy as well it came in a cab of 50 i think yeah, and they weren't yeah, cheap. They, they were yeah. eight fifty a whack. I, I know wow. for a petite Corona. For so, a petite Corona, yeah. Um, but at that point, I would still put them at a solid box worthy. Awesome. And um, it was a, a delightful experience to say the least. Um, I'll be sad when they're gone. I, I, I think the exclusive Wolf series is probably one of my favorite blends from Viaje at this point. I think that. They age so well. Um, it seems to me that it's the only blend from them that is not hit or miss. It's consistent. Yeah, it's it very consistent. consistent. All the flavor, yeah. all the different vitolas that I've tried in that blend have been phenomenal. 
Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk on this show about the skull and bones blends. Yep. Some of them are phenomenal. Some of them, Some of them are miss. complete yep. misses. Yep. Um, so that being said, uh, I highly, highly recommend it. Just a tip for our listeners. Try not to drop your cigars on the floor while you're smoking them. Just saying. Oh, especially that one, man. It's Damn. a good try. Yeah, it's a good tip. Any burn holes in your shirt, Paul? <clears throat> there's some dark spots. Uh-oh. Oh, we well, already we, gave we us need, a thousand. We need an official. Uh, <laughs> no, it's definitely not a hole. <laughs> no. All right, <laughs> we're good. It's a little, it's a little torched. <laughs> so um, another stick that Alex, who gifted us our first uh, Stogie of the Week tonight, also sent us some um, Arturo Fuente short stories. Originally, we thought these might have some age on it because of the looks of the plastic, but Mark Jr., you had an interesting insight onto the band tonight. It has the new band. It has the new band, which means they're newer. Uh, yeah. within the last year. I actually think if they're at our fingertips, it might be worth showing because yeah. it's interesting. Uh, we've talked about it on the past, trying to find aged cigars and trying being cognizant of the band. And now Tim's holding that up. That extra gold and black stripe on the bottom is mm-hmm. what differentiates the new band from the old band. Yep. Um, so for those of us who have, uh, you know, are, are, are out seeking cigars, and I'm assuming if you're listening to us that you are that kind of person, well, thank you. um, anything Fuente that has that second band is less than a year old. Now I can say I smoked one last night. <laughs> it was fantastic, man. I you know what's it you know, had age this, on it. These have like this little... <laughs> Like white crystals on the wrapper. Yeah, man. I noticed that, too. It, it, I would have sworn these had some age on them. And I can tell you, the way it smoked, I had an ash. First of all, construction-wise, I had an ash all the way down to the band. I mean, it literally felt as I was taking off the band. Um, and there's a picture up on the The smell on this thing is outstanding. I, I love these things. And thank you. Thank you, um, Alex, for sending them to me because... Um, I was all out, you know, so I really enjoyed that last night. It was a nice change of pace. It's been a while. Um, I think yeah. I think it's worth saying, too, that uh, the Cameroon versus the Maduro wrappers and the Hemingways, um, typically, in my opinion, the Maduros really outperform them. But in the short story, I think the short I, story I really is think the Cameroon is, is, is a really, really awesome smoke. Yeah, I agree, man. Um, in that, uh, and for less than five bucks, that they have, you know, forty minute smoke, you can't beat it, man. It, it's a great smoke. Yeah, I yeah. agree. I'm, I'm excited uh, to try it. So, thank you again. Excellent. Um, let's see. Could I jump in real quick? Yeah, yeah. yeah I was going um, to go back to a couple other things that you wanted to talk about. Yeah. Um, I, I revisited a Skull and Bones mystery. Uh, this, this, uh, this. I think that was close to two weeks now. Um, I went with the non-box press version um, just because I'd been such a big fan of the box press um, to see, you know, maybe... Because these are uh, a little bit more available than the box press. The box press was much more limited. Um, It had a very, very nice uh, pepper and spice. Uh, The Woody uh, Viaje signature was there as well. Um, I would not rate it as high as I would the box press, but I would say it's more than a fiver. So, um, it, it was a, it was a definitely, definitely, definitely a, a very, very good smoke. And I recommend them if you can find them. Excellent. How's everyone's, uh, San Anjos Lancero doing? Good, awesome. man. <laughs> I'm, I'm still working on the first third, to be honest. I'm enjoying the flavors. The burning construction is A plus, man. A plus. I agree. I cannot beat it. Um, really fantastic. Alex in the chat room actually, and um, he mentions that as far as the short stories, that the entire box he bought has crystals all over them. We wanted to know what it's that meant. Yeah. Um, I said, well, that's a good sign that they're going to age nicely. It's a start of plume. I mean that. Well, I, yeah, I think the the. The beginnings of plume tend to show up as crystals, and I think yes. if the wrappers kind of got those oils on them, as they age, they start to turn into these little crystals. Yeah. And plume is typically a whitish, yellowish color. Yeah. And it's um, it's basically the oils on the wrapper drying over time. Yeah. I think it's a really good sign. I'll tell you what, they're smoking fantastic. Um, the, the one I smoked last night was fantastic. So, anyways. That's awesome. Moving on. Um, um, you want me to go? Or? No, number one on my list. Oh, yeah. What's Let's go one? there. This is my smoke of the week, hands down. I mean, it wasn't even a competition. <clears throat> and I don't know what it was about this cigar when I smoked it. I mean, from the time I lit it up, it was just, it poured smoke, it poured flavor. 
Um, unbelievable smoking experience. Tons of smoke everywhere. Um, a subtle spice. That really nice sweetness that presents itself through this blend. Extremely satisfying. I mean, uh, just the experience. And like when I was done, I was extremely satisfied with the smoke. This has a, a Connecticut Broadleaf Maduro wrapper uh, and Dominican um, binder and filler. And is, of course, the Arturo Fuente Añejo number 77 Shark. Nice. With about two years of age. Two, awesome. A year? A year or two? Two years. Okay. Might be two years of age. Well, they're typically released around Christmas, so... Yeah, so this was isn't... Was this prior Christmas? It wasn't was this it? last Christmas. It was the Christmas before. So you're talking a year and a half at least. A yeah. year and a half. Yep. Year and a half of age. One of my favorite awesome. blends on the planet. It was awesome. Yeah. I, it, it, and the flavors aren't like really like the strength and flavors aren't in your face. You know, they're, they're, they're kind of subtle and um, it intensifies with this particular shape. And this thing held an ash. If you click on the link in the show notes, visit our Stogie's feed. You can see the ash that this thing had. Yep. It was epic. It was awesome. I, I, I couldn't like I, I'm like, why isn't the ash falling? It was it was huge. It was almost to the band. Can I ask why picture. you didn't drink it with that Sam Houston whiskey behind us? Like I, I know you too. I should have. Yes, you well, you know what? I, you know, You're a big fan of that pairing. Yes, I am. You know what, yeah. though? I I was with the scotch that we're drinking now. Where's the bottle? The Ashenta Sean. Uh, I sent it your way. Oh, there it is. All right. Yeah. Ashenta Sean. This is the uh, the classic. I want to say this is uh, not a lot per bottle. A very reasonably priced Ashentashan Classic is what I drank it with. And I'm really... Li- I mean, you can see the color is kind of light. Yep. Perfect. It's, it's not the color scotch that I typically go for, but yeah. it is very, very good. I'm drinking it right it's now. It's not overly peaty. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, so the flavors on it are yeah. awesome. I, it, it pairs with so many... Go- I can tell you exactly what I paid for. Hold on. Go ahead. Talk. I'm going to do that. You know, it's funny because um, I pulled an Neho shock out of my long-term humidor this week. Um, this was from the December 2011 release, and I was going to smoke it and never got to it. But I can tell you what, after drinking this rum tonight, I'm going to pair that bad boy with this rum this weekend because uh, I think it's going to pair fantastically. So, now, Okay, so now, here we go. Okay. A Shentishan Classic. Guess how much I paid for that bottle? Uh, $28. $25.99. Oh, that was close. Awesome. Twenty five ninety nine. I'm on Massachusetts prices. Sorry, that's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome for a good bottle of scotch. Yeah. But back to the añejos. Um, the shark has never been my favorite vitola in that blend. Now, don't take this the wrong way. I really, really like a shark, but I tend to like the smaller ring gauges better in that blend. Mm. Um, now, but, uh, you smoked a shark from like 2006 while we were hanging out one night. It was retarded. You were. Blown away. It was like hearted. I, I thought you were going to like melt into your seat because you were so enamored with the flavors and the smoke. Yeah. Dude, it's, it's easy. That was one of the best smokes I've had in, in, in recent times. Mm. It was phenomenal. So, so that being said, even though it's not my favorite Vitola, when they come around, I still grab five or six mm-hmm. and then let them sit for a while. So, from the December 2010 release, I had maybe 10, maybe, and I was kind of smoking them like, oh, I really like them. I want to smoke one, but I was kind of, you know, not really trying to hit them too hard. When December 2011 came around, I bought an entire box. Nice. So now I'm kind of going back. and See, this year I bought a box out of 46s. Yeah, there you go. I so, bought a bunch of Robustos who were two years old already. The from 50s. Stogie Santa, yeah. <laughs> I, I have two full boxes. <laughs> now, I think that's almost too much of older ones, but... uh. The 50s are easily... They're solid. They're my second favorite. Yeah. The 46 is my favorite. Well, I'm excited because now I got a 46 that you gave me one tonight, Paul. So, yes. Um, In my opinion, it goes 46, 50, 76. So, not, I, not to hop on Opus, but there is an Opus Shark. And the here, one from the CFCF box was not good, but the reg, they released in regular production boxes without the coffin a shark size. And I tell you what, that thing was awesome. See, now, I've never had one of those, so I can't really compare I have, it. I have but, two left in my humidor. But if it, I, 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 like, I want you to smoke one to see what you think, because they're just, ah, oh, they're so good, and they're so different from the one that came from the CFCF box, and I swear they're the a CFCF different. box was underwhelming. It Again, was. I'm going to go back to that term. It was. It was underwhelming. Absolutely, it was. And, and the mine regular, was older than yours, too, I think. Yeah. Mine was like an 08, and it was still underwhelming. Ah. <sighs> Inconsistencies. So we have a question from the chat room. Yes. 
So, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry for that. Jason from HighlightCigars.com wants to know if the Ineos have the same band update that we just talked about with the rest of Fuente. And I don't know the answer to that question because I'm not sure any Ineos have been released yet this year, have they? They have not yet been released this year, but I think the December of 2011 would have fallen into that band switch, yeah. f- for lack of a better term. Well, I have some at home, but, uh, so I'll check when I get yeah, home. Yeah, I, I think we'd have to get back to them. You have the, the, the box, but if I remember correctly, I have five of them at home. If I remember correctly, they are not different. Yeah, I don't think they I don't are. Think they are. But the Anejo I band guess is, we'll see this year. Right? The Anejo yeah. band was a little different from the Hemingway band, if I remember correctly. It says correctly. Anejo on yeah, it, rather it than... Um, yeah. I'll hold it up. This one says Grand Reserva on it. Right. Where oh, this wait, says where's Grand your Reserva. Añejo? At home. Tim, no, you, I gave you one in your, in your oh, bag. Oh, is that a newer one? Or? No, that's definitely not a newer one. Is that one of the ones I traded you? No. No, I, I, pick, I don't know where I picked that up. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely the typical band right here. I'll hold okay. it up. Um, oh, that's right. I forgot off the top of my head. They actually have a white underband they, on Yeah, them. it's a little different. So they might not bother changing it, to be honest yeah. with you. I mean, they're, almost, they're always wrapped in cedar. Um, I'm holding it up for the camera. Except for the shark. It is similar, but it has the white on the bottom. You're right. Yeah, except there for the shark. Good point, my genius. Yeah, interesting. How, interesting how would question, you get, though, Jason, man. Thank you for asking that. It is a good question. Yeah. yeah. How would you get cedar around the Anejo shark size? The shark? It, would, it would take some craftiness, yeah, to it be would, honest. Yeah, it yeah, would uh, yeah. have to be a perfectly cut piece of cedar. <laughs> yes. So that was my pick of the week, and I say those sticks are oasis, man. I think you awesome. need some Anejo sharks in your... In your humidor, and it's kind of weird because it's kind of one of those things that there's a lot of hype around them. To me, it lives up to the hype, and I, I've smoked several of them. I, I smoked one from a, from my friend Walt that had some age on it, which was awesome. I smoked when they, you know, the batch that came out in December 2011. I smoked a few, and I smoked some from the batch that came out uh, this year, and they're just they're all awesome. They age so good. Yes, now, they do. They technically, do. Anejos are infused. Is that correct? No. That's what I've been telling well, you. No. They're no. aged in sherry casks. The wrappers are aged in sherry casks. Yeah. Yes. I'm not sure. Or that. cognac. 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 Oh, sorry. Cognac. 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 Yeah. cognac casks. They are aged inside of a cask, but they are not infused. Okay. Right. No. Yeah. I, I hear mixed things on that. Some people yeah, say so, that's Well, infused, some, people some people will call that infused, but yeah, it, it is different than a lot of rappers. Whatever. It's good. I'm going to say that. So It's, a, <laughs> it's, not, a, it's not infused in it's like a an acid or CAO yeah, yeah, flavors. Yeah, yeah. But it's a Connecticut so. seed uh, broadleaf wrapper. Maduro wrapper. Yeah. Maduro wrapper that's grown in, in the Dominican. Um, and Stogie Sano was telling me something interesting that in the early 90s, before the fire that we talked about at the Fuente Farm, yes, that they had a, a broadleaf wrapper, a straight broadleaf wrapper that they were using on Añejo um, that was grown on their farms that was not a Connecticut seed. It was even more amazing than the Connecticut broadleaf wrapper they're that. using. Yeah. I have read that. Yeah. And People said they were just absolutely I think ridiculous. the chances of finding those is one to none, but... Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the Añejos came from that because all yes. of the the Opus wrappers were destroyed that year. The original so Añejos was ra- Opus filler and, f- filler and binder. Correct. With a different yes, wrapper. Yes, yes. I, I, yeah, okay, good. I'm glad I was right on that. Now, what's interesting, that, while we're on Fuente, Don Carlos' anniversary. Anniversario. Anniversario, which just came in, I'm told, is the Don Carlos binder filler with an Opus X Rosado wrapper on it. That's what I was told today. They are very good. Have you smoked one of the They're new batch? They're also very pricey. What do they the, cost on that? 30 bucks. Yeah. Have you smoked the new batch that came in? I have not smoked one out of the new batch, but I have smoked them in the past. Oh, you have? Okay. So yeah, I, I yeah. never heard of this stick before. Yeah, I, actually, as a matter of fact, um, the uh, night we smoked the BBMF Maduro, yeah. I was at a loss to bring a smoke to follow that up with. Yes. And I chose that smoke. Um, it did not hold up to the BBMF Maduro. Yeah, I know the BBMF Maduro. Oh. <laughs> I think you fall. I think you followed up something there that probably can't be followed up, though. I yeah. tried, yeah. yeah, valiantly, yeah. Um, but it is a, it is a very good smoke, and um, we also got one of those in our Fuente story boxes. As oh, well. I think you're right. Yes, I think you're right. Plus the other the other really rare Opus uh, two, the Taurus, the Bull. No, 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 no. The the other one. The two, the one that comes in, that come in the natural and the sun grown. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The Don Carlos something or something other. or others. Yeah, there's a couple of Don Carlos. How do we there. get back on Opus again? How do we get punched again? <laughs> no, so there are story boxes from 
2010 and 2011. So Mark Jr. and I got a, a story box, yep. which is four cigars. We got them on auction for $100. It comes Great with a, a Taurus the Bull and some of those Don Carlos in, in special anniversary. I have things. yet to try any Don Carlos, so I might just have to pull the trigger and buy one of those $30. Sticks that try one, man. Yeah, man. I mean, I mean, anything that they wrap the Opus wrapper yeah. in is usually pretty good. Well, the Don Collis is a classic smoke, too. It man. is. It's a really if good If you smoke. look it up, you'll well, see a lot of famous people really, that's their go-to smoke. Yeah. I mean, they really love that smoke. And Speaking love. of wrapping cigars in the in the Rosado wrapper, mm-hmm. have you ever got, well, I know Paul's had one. Have you ever had the A58 Sungrown Rosado wrapper? Yes. Epic. Epic. I actually stupid epic. I I, re- <laughs> I got one from Stogie Sandro about three months ago, and I recently hit him up again. He said, "No, they are gone," and I don't believe him. So no, don't believe him. <laughs> but he's still not going to give you one. Yeah. Um, but uh, the th- the thing I'll say about that is the best part about that is is when you can find them, they are seven dollars and fifty cents. Yeah, I'm, they're they're which is ridiculous yeah. for how good that smoke is. Yeah. I mean the yeah. the regular uh, Every, everybody A5 goes for the Hemingways great. or the the Anejos or the Opus X. But All right, so here's the thing, Fuente, if you're listening, you need to up production on that Opus X Rosado oh, yeah. wrapper and start wrapping everything in it because it's just it's special. Will it be special anymore? That's the question, though. All right, we we got all that was from a Fuente short story. All right, I got one last one yeah. left on my list. You got two. You got the Tatawahe Mexican, and you got the oh, Coravari. You're, you're right. Yeah. Okay, um, the Coravari El Gran Rey Bellicoso. I've been wanting to try these for a while. Um, Stokey Santa had a sampler come in, so I grabbed one today. Thank you. Um, it is Cuban seed grown in Nicaragua, so it is a Nicaraguan puro. Um, I don't know if the, is a Cuban seed grown in Nicaragua, a Nicaraguan puro. I'm grown in Nicaragua. Anyways, I digress. Medium body and strength really started quite a bit. It was flat, to be honest with you. Um, I wasn't impressed with the first third. But as it smoked, um, the flavors did increase and became more enjoyable. The last third is really where it shined. Um, lots of cedar spice and some honey sweetness. I say the angler in the end. The overall smoking experience was good, but not great. Um, it's something I'd smoke again. The price is right. I think it's in the $6 range. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd like to try some of the other Curavari. I've heard really good things. But nobody can agree, and everybody I've asked, what their favorite is. Yeah. And there is six or seven different lines. So um, I'm, I'm going to revisit some of the other lines. I really want to see what these, this brand can do. Um, Mark Jr., you're going to say something? I was going to correct us from the previous tangent we had. So Okay, go ahead. Uh, the one that we were talking about, Paul, was the Don Carlos Edicion de, Edicion de Aniversario. The Grand Anniversario is a different smoke. That is the one that comes in natural and sun grown. That's in the box. Okay. okay. They are extremely in the oh, story. Don Arturo Grand Anniversario as That's, opposed to the Don Carlos edition uh, de Anniversario. Okay. Okay. So there is. I just wanted to correct ourselves yeah. for the for the listeners, but because uh, the story yeah. that's the ones that come in the story box are the Don Arturo one, Grand Anniversario, Grand as opposed to the Don, Don Carlos Edición de Anniversario. I got gotcha. you. Very, very, very similar names because can I, I had, be very confusing. Well, I had never heard mentioning. of a Don Carlos Edición Anniversario, which just came into our local shop, which I bought a, a couple to try. Yeah. I mean, at thirty bucks a stick, I was yeah, kind of like, yeah, yeah. You, you're hesitant. Yeah, yeah I, I hesitate yeah, I tonight. I, I want to buy a lot of them because they're they're Fuente and they're special. And well, they're I, think at, I think at thirty dollars a pop, they're going to be there a while too. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're not going um, anywhere. So if you like them, they're going to be there in a week or two. Yeah, exactly. Um, That's what I'm thinking of doing: is smoking some, seeing how well I like them, and maybe buying a couple more if I really, really like them. Yep. I, I can't imagine they're going to suck. I guess is what I'm saying. You know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, and who knows what they're going to do with age, and that's the conundrum. They don't. That we, they don't. Yeah. I've I've had a couple of them, and they don't suck. They're right. they're, they're good, and they. Um, Just for the record, I'd take an eight five eight sun grown over that any day, but I, mean, I would too at seven dollars and fifty yeah. cents a piece. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, we're talking what a quarter of the price yeah. at that point, yeah. and I can't imagine that it's that much better than that smoke. To be honest, mm. so well, we'll see. let's move on. Sure. Oh, All so right. you smoked the Tatawahe Mexican Experiment. Yeah, so it's interesting because um, I thought this was a Florida 
Southern release only. They released a Robusto in this about two weeks ago. Um, there's supposedly some coming in. Thank you, Big Al. Um, he orders us. Is that Thunder? Or is it was Thunder. Okay. Um, however, I found out today that there's a New England release, a Toro, a 6x52. So I took it down this afternoon. Um, great stick, medium body, medium strength. I got some hints of cocoa, some wood, some spice. It was a bit underfilled, but not to the point where I couldn't enjoy it. It did burn fast. Um, the draw was a bit loose, but not excessive. Um, I'm holding a rating on it because I want to smoke more, and I do have more. Um, but I enjoyed the heck out of the smoke. I thought it was a good, solid smoke. Can we talk to the smell of that wrapper for oh, a second? Oh, it smelled incredible, man. Yeah, go ahead. It is the strongest barnyard smell I've ever gotten off of a cigar. Yep. Bar none, period, done, end of sentence. It uh, was, I got no barnyard flavors off of that smoke, though, really. I, I, Which is interesting, because that wrapper reeked of it. Yeah, I mean, it was medium-bodied at best. I mean, it wasn't... Okay. If if it was there, it was very very subtle, and I couldn't pick, pick it out. Up. Yeah, pick yeah, it up, okay. but fair enough. Um, I definitely recommend checking these out, whether they be the Robusto or the Toro. And I did read today that there might be a West Coast release of a different size, so there might be something else coming in a different size in the coming weeks. I wonder if this is going to turn into a production cigar. Well, I'm getting that maybe feeling this is for like it. a feeler, like throwing them out. Like exactly, the I'm getting that feeling. Is nobody has any information on the blend. Other than possibly has some Mexican tobacco in it. I assume the wrapper. San Andreas wrapper. I, yeah. would, I would assume. I mean, it looked like a San Andreas wrapper. Yeah, I agree. Um, but Had nobody knows slight sure. greenish. Exactly. That slight greenish yep. brown. Um, but yeah, check them out, man. Um, they're going fast, though. They're very limited. I, I want to say the Vlada release was only 200 boxes. I'm not sure about the New England release, but I suspect it's about four, It's 400. 400. 400 okay. bundles of 15. Okay. All right. According to Smokin. Well, I, it's a pretty reputable source, yeah, I think. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so do we want to do the uh, contest winners? I didn't pick my Stogie of the Week, but okay. Pick your Stogie of the Week. Uh, I'm going to go to the Elogio Habano. Elogio? Elogio, sorry. Elogio Habano. Right, you know? And that's a tough choice, man, because I smoked some Apple You did. But that was even a far and above the Skull and Bones um, and far and above the Padron Millennium. Yes. Wow. I think what? it what fits my flavor profile more than the other two. Don't get me wrong. The other two smokes are epic, but they're not something I would smoke regularly. Mm. So I'm picking the Elogio because it's something I would enjoy on a weekly basis with a cup of coffee on Sunday morning. And that's what I'm going with. So very nice contest winners. This is for the J Grotto Reserva Corona Gorda Fiver, which uh, Tim has ready yes. to go, ready to send, and some extras. Stogie and some Santa extras threw in a lighter. What did you? Stogie Santa threw in a lighter, and you also said there would be some. How did you put it? Uh, Special sticks from my sm- hitchhikers. Thank yes, you, hitchhikers. Thank you. For uh, my personal collection, I will throw a couple sticks in there. And the winner is drumroll, please. <laughs> Paul D. of Boston, Massachusetts, picked a local guy. He sent in a picture of an E.P. Carrillo Dark Ritual, some bourbon, and a little bit of uh, security geekness in the background, which is Backtrack 5 running Metasploit. Absolutely. Which is, I think, really what solidified his... <laughs> he appealed to the security geek in Tim and I, and we are like, did. dude, you win. Uh, it's a solid smoke, and um, I got to edit that because I got stretched there. But... um. Yeah, it, it's a solid smoke. It's a good bourbon, and yeah, it, you win, dude. Um, I have your email address. I'll drop you an email over the weekend. So yes, Paul D, congratulations for winning the Jake Crowder Reserve Corona Gorda Fiver. Well done, sir. Um, Paul and Stogie Santa's most versatile cigars. This is what I'm uh, very uh, fond of. This is the uh, let's see, Camacho Connecticut eleven eighteen, Padron. Um, Pyramid, 1964 yep. anniversary. Um, what else do we have on the list? The uh, Atoro Fuente 858 Maduro. Yep. And two more that I can't think of off the top of my head. <coughs> what were some of the ones on the list? Oh, uh, uh, Ashton VSG Trade Mystique. One of my favorites with coffee. And there's one more in there. You want me to pull it up? Which I can't think of. Which will which you win, which we can't think of right now. <laughs> and that's Peter D, a.k.a. at Sharing Smoke on Twitter. 
for submitting the picture of a Romacraft Tobacco Intemperance EC 28th Charity with a Starbucks coffee and a Zycar scissor uh, in the... What I liked about this picture was the... Uh, it looks like there's a little bit of a shaggy foot, yep. which he was able to capture in the picture. It was really cool. Do you have that picture up? Uh, I do, yeah. I believe the uh, last stick was a Kahuno 2003. Yes, Kahuno Tatawahe Kahuno 2003. Yep. But, um, well done, sir. Yeah, well done. So we will get those out to you. Do you have that five of ready to go? Or I need to coordinate with Stokey Santa. I'm putting you on the spot now. Sorry. Yeah, we'll get we'll get those sticks. I need to. Um, I'll, I'll have Stokey Santa send those to you in the next. Uh, awesome. Yes. Okay. So uh, that was not a short episode, Paul. We said we were going to do a short episode tonight. That was, was not, not a short episode. And I forgot to mention the sponsor in the beginning. Our sponsor is Ocean State Cigars, makers of fine premium hand rolled cigars, Jay Grotto series. The new Connecticut Silk. You can find out more information about the fantastic smokes at www.oceanstatecigars.com. Thanks, everyone, for listening. It's been an epic episode. We're glad to uh, bring you all of the uh, information about the smokes that we've had. Uh, And we talked about a lot of them, probably uh, almost 30 cigars, probably more on this show. Uh, Tim and Mark Jr., thank you very much for helping us round Thanks for having me, guys. The show... And uh, again, thanks everyone for listening, and we'll see everyone on the next episode. Yes, sir. Good night, guys.